Hey everybody, it is the Kitchen Bitch coming at you once again from my kitchen, my humble, humble kitchen, which is a little bit remodeling. We got a, a, a new range, maybe since the last video. We moved some things around. I actually have a knife rack, courtesy of my brother, uh, AJ Herbie, and uh, we moved the mic away. Today, we will be doing roast. Yes, roast. Big old all American roast. This is a chuck roast uh, that my roommate who went grocery shopping. It was so nice to go grocery shopping. Uh, picked up this five pound hunk of meat for ten dollars because it was on sale. We've had it in the freezer for about two weeks now. You know, meat will stay frozen fairly well. Uh, we pulled it out two days ago to thaw and put it in the refrigerator. And then yesterday afternoon, from about I don't know two o'clock in the afternoon until about. 9 or 10 o'clock at night, it's had out of room temperature, and then we finally took it back in the uh, refrigerator, and it's fully dethawed now because it is a huge five pound chunk of meat. So what we will be doing with this is we're going to season it up real nice, really simple. We'll toss it in our cast iron, sear it all around, shove it in a 400 degree oven. Uh, it's 400 degree Fahrenheit for you weird British people. I might put a little thing right about here of what that is in the Celsius. Yeah. Freak! And uh, we'll do some carrots and some onions with it. And while that's in the oven, we're going to go to our local supermarket and pick up some uh, baking potatoes and, you know, things to go with that, like sour cream and some bacon bits and so on and so forth. Uh, come back and do those up for you. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and take our oven and set that to 400 degrees. Doot, doot. Bake. And once that's set to 400, we will take our cast iron skillet here and turn him to about a medium heat. It's about, that's, that says five. Uh, I like using cast iron because it heats very evenly and it can go straight into the oven from here. And don't forget, turn on your vent. So what we're going to do now is take our carrots and cut them into one inch sections, put them into a bowl on the side, and then we'll cut up our onions kind of small bits. You want these to be all about even in size so that they all cook evenly. So you can take it and cut it in half so you get two parts. So that they're all about the same size. And now we're going to do an onion, or half an onion rather. Uh, it's in a plastic bag. They keep for a couple of days, maybe a week or so, in a plastic bag in your fridge. You want to take off this outer layer of skin, for lack of a better term. And this we're going to get kind of small. There we go. Take all that, stick that in our little bowl here. Here's our carrots and onions. I like to use a dry rub. I actually like to use a dry rub for most of my meat. And what goes in this dry rub? Some very simple ingredients. Freshly ground black pepper, because there is nothing better than ground black pepper. Kosher salt, garlic powder, rosemary, and sage, and, sage, and some freshly ground nutmeg. If you don't have fresh nutmeg, uh, the other stuff will do. So let's combine all this stuff into a bowl, then we'll take this and rub it all over our meat. Now remember, with all these ingredients, we need to put enough in here to actually cover all sides of the roast. Now there's the black pepper, kosher salt, garlic powder, and I don't have a lot in here, so I'm just going to use the last of it. Now, most people will start asking me, well, how much of these ingredients do you actually use? I use however much I think I actually want to use. Yeah, I know, it's a, it's a bitch answer. But it's the truth. If I feel something needs a bit more, I put a bit more in it. 
and you can kind of judge by how long I do something on this that's enough so nutmeg kind of take it grate it on in here but I've already put in the garlic the sage the rosemary the salt and the pepper and here's the glass bit with the nutmeg Mmm, smells great. So now, take this and mix it up with our hands. Now at one point I used to add meat tenderizer to this, thinking I would actually need it. But, you don't. You really don't need meat tenderizer. Because it cooks so such a, a, a perfect temperature for just the right amount of time. Alright, and now we take this and just kind of spread it on and rub it on the meat. Now don't be afraid to massage it in there. You just got to get good into that meat. Don't forget to get the fat too because that's very important. That's where a lot of the flavor is in any kind of meat. Always look for good marbling to help you get your flavor in there. Now that I've made a complete and utter mess, I'm going to wash my hands, move the camera angle, and we're going to toss this in the skillet. Alright, we're in now. I've got some oil, and I have uh, some black peppercorns, some rosemary, and some salt in. Give it a little shake, give it a lot of flavor. Pour it in the skillet here, toss it in the meat, sear it on all sides, toss in our veggies, stick a meat thermometer into it, and shove the whole thing into the oven. Here we go. Oven's ready. Now it's going to pop and fizz and make all kinds of worldly commotion as soon as I toss this in there. So just be careful. We're going to sear it on all sides. Smoke can be considered as a good thing. A little blackness, it's okay. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So well, that's doing what it wants to do. We're going to take these veggies and kind of toss them in here and there. Don't worry, a couple hours in a uh, 400 degree oven, they'll soften right up. Now we take our meat thermometer. You want... See, I'm a big fan of 150-ish degrees. That's medium to medium rare. Especially on a chunk of meat like this. More medium. So we put it to about 150. So when we pull it out and it rests for about 5 minutes, it will continue cooking to about 155, which is where I like it. Now the position of your meat thermometer is very, very crucial. You want it in the fattest part of the entire chunk of meat, which means about here. By fattest, I mean thickest. You want your probe to rest in the middle of the, of the chunk of meat. You don't want it to touch the bottom of the pan or any other part of the pan because then it's just going to be reading the temperature of the pan and not of the meat. So now we got all this set, we're going to take it and put it into our 400 degree oven.
Everything is now in the oven sizzling away beautifully at 400 degrees. One of the other reasons why we have set the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit is because of baked potatoes. Baked potatoes take about an hour to cook uh, at 425. So about an hour 15, hour and a half at 400 degrees, your baked potatoes will be cooked. So what we have to do now is stop everything that we're doing not that we're actually really doing anything today. And we're going to go to the grocery store. Uh, by bike, it takes me about, oh, I don't know, six minutes. And then, so that's a 12-minute round trip and about 10 minutes at the grocery store. You guys want to come along? So we made it back from Kroger. Relatively safe and unscathed. Crazy motors or anything. So, a lot of breath. I can't even bike up the stairs. Oh, from head smell vision. You can smell the wonderful concoction coming from the kitchen area right now. Warmer day than I thought it was going to be. So I had to cover up some. Ooh, package from mom. So I had to cover up some because of wind chill and all that such. So let's have a look at our roast. It's been gone for well, about half an hour or so, I'll say. Look at that. It's beautiful. Still isn't even at 1.30 yet. So we'll give us enough time to get our potatoes ready. Mom sent us a package. So while we were out, it came. So let's see what Mom sent us. Bubble wrap. New sheet quattro. The four blade definition. Cool. Only about the free gift. Only about the free gift. Quattro. Ooh, dollar off of disposable razors. I think Mom says I need to shave. Is what that is. Ooh. North Mississippi All Stars. Shake hands with Shorty. Guys, if you are, uh, if you're, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for all your great music out there. It's really gotten me through some, uh, I don't want to say difficult times, just some times when I was really fucking bored and needed some really good music. You guys are awesome live, and, uh, playing the electric washboard, who else does that? I mean, come on, Cody, you're the shit, that's all I gotta say. And as a drummer, I look up to you. Look, kitchen grip. These things are really awesome because they have really great grips, and they, uh, they're safer grips, they're stain resistant, they're water repellent, and they're heat resistant up to 500 degrees. 500 degrees Fahrenheit! That's really fucking hot! So we'll be using these to take the roast out of the oven. And if you guys want to get me anything from my Amazon wish list, link's on the sidebar. Really. I really want stuff. And as you can tell, I don't really have a whole lot of stuff. So small things are great. Knives, oven mitts, aprons. So we're back in the store now. Ooh, heavy backpack. Yes, I rode my bicycle all the way to Kroger. Yeah, I went ahead and said it, Kroger. Um, still like, I'll say at most a mile or so. A couple of hills on the way there, but it's more fun coming back because the hills are going down. Uh, what we picked up were potatoes. Where a couple of baking potatoes, some mild cheddar cheese, already shredded. They have the reduced fat sour cream, 10 for $10 with your Kroger card. The, the other size, the smaller size, was 99 cents. So uh, I got 16 ounces versus 9 ounces, or sorry, 8 ounces for a dollar. And some uh, real bacon bits, the smoked flavor. Get that? Oh, my good luck, good luck, good luck. Hey. Okay. Um, this was, the real bacon bits were cheaper than actually buying real bacon, cooking it, and cutting it up. Yeah, sometimes I'm cheap and I'm easy like that. We already have butter in the fridge. So we're going to put this stuff up in its appropriate areas. And then the cheese in the fridge, the sour cream in the fridge. And uh, let's see what this says. The 
with the real bacon bit smoked flavoring added. Uh, keep refrigerated after opening, so we're gonna go ahead and toss it in the fridge so it's used to being. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take these two potatoes. We're gonna wash them, poke some holes in them with a fork, toss them in another cast iron skillet, a smaller one. Mainly because I just realized I am out of aluminum foil. So uh, here on Kitchen Bits, we just kind of make do with what we got. So here we go. I'll take our uh, potatoes here, fork out of our draining board, and just go. Bah! And I don't really know why I'm poking holes in this. To be honest, uh, I just always thought it was a good idea to do, so I do it. So do that. And I don't know about you, but where my potatoes come from, they don't come seasoned. So let's season these up. I know what you're saying, kitchen bitch. What do you use to season your potatoes? Well, I use the same thing I use to season everything else. Kosher salt, black pepper, and I'm going to toss some butter on this just because I think it'll be a lot better that way. Uh, this is about two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to do some pads in here. Because uh, I'm not exact like that, and to me, cooking isn't an exact science. Well, unless you're baking. But it's not that exact of a science, so don't worry too much about it. Now we're going to take this and stick it, and stick it into our oven. now about an hour later and we'll be good. So the roast has hit 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to take it out of the oven. We're going to let it rest for about 5 to 10 minutes because it just needs to kind of congeal and so it can hold all of its juices together. The potatoes aren't quite done yet so what we're going to do is we're going to take the oven after you pull out the, the roast and crank it up to about mm, 450 or so. Let it super bake for a little bit longer. Our roast has rested. The potatoes are perfect. Because we put the butter with them, they're kind of crispy on the outside, kind of like fried, uh, but on the inside they're nice and soft. We'll pull that out and we'll carve up our meat and plate our wonderful dish. Here we go. We got our roast from the pan. Put it there on our large cutting board. We'll take the knife that I got for Christmas, the Forever Sharp knife, slightly serrated, little holes, little serrations cut into the side. Uh, it actually works fairly well. And uh, we'll just slice this whole entire thing up so we can serve it and uh, have a lot for leftovers. So here we go. that gorgeous medium rare right there. Now I've plated everything, or I and my roommate have plated everything. Uh, we have deliciously attacked the potatoes with such substances as set forth before of, of butter and sour cream and, and 
bacon and, and cheese. And we've also added some uh, microwavable steam fresh corn. So this is what we have. Here's my deliciousness plate. Mmm, deliciousness. And she has added uh, broccoli and cheese to her potato. <coughs> yes, uh, I think I might be coming out with a cold. So, we will now enjoy our meals. And uh, see you on the next episode of Kitchen Bitch.